When you're learning proof trees, lots and lots of examples are your friend. So here are two worked examples for proof trees for first order logic. Hello everyone, welcome to The Attic. My name's Mark Jago. I'm a philosopher in the UK. I've been working through first order logic with you. We've been looking at proof trees for first order logic. In the previous video, I showed you the rules and how they work. In this video, I'm gonna put them to use, working through two examples of proof trees in first order logic, one without identity and one with identity. That sounds good to you. Give this video a thumbs up. That really helps me out. And why not subscribe to the channel? First example, let's suppose we're trying to prove this sentence. So basically it's the duality of universal quantifier and existential quantifier with a biconditional in the middle. So we're trying to show that this sentence is valid. Okay, how do we do that in a proof tree? Well, we've got no premise, we've just got the conclusion, so we negate our conclusion. So we've got a negated biconditional. So the rule for that is a branching rule. And basically we're saying that one is true, the other is false, and there's two ways that can go. So either it's the bit on the left that's true and the bit on the right that's false, so we negate it, or it's the bit on the left that's false, so we negate it, and the bit on the right that's true. Then we can take that one off to say that we're done. So let's work down this left branch first. We've got a double negation here. That's pretty easy. That just becomes there is an x fx, and then we can take that one off. The existential, we have to introduce a new name. That name is going to be a, one we haven't used yet, so we can take that one off. And then we have to put this name up into the universal quantifier. So instead of for all x, not fx, we're going to have not fa. And lo and behold, we've got fa, not fa, and that branch closes. Okay, that was pretty simple. So let's look at the right-hand branch. So here we've got a negated universal and we've got a negated existential. Doesn't really matter which one we do first. Let's start at the top. This negated universal is going to become an existential. There is an x, not not fx. So careful here not to miss that negation out. Tick that one off to say that we're done. Now let's do this one. It's not, there is an x. So that's going to become for all x, not fx. You can tick that one off. The existential, we instantiate with a new name. Now, although we've used this name a here, that's in a different branch, right? That is one branch and that is another branch. On the branch that we're interested in, there's no names. So we can use a name A in this existential here. So we get not, not, F, A. Okay, and then I tick that one off. We've got a double negation here, but I'm actually going to leave that for the moment because we might not need to use it. So here we've got a universal that we haven't used. So I can use this new name, A, and instantiate it into this universal. So that gives me not F, A. And then notice here, I've got a sentence and its negation. So that branch closes. I didn't actually need to use the double negation rule here because this is the negation of this. One's got one negation, one's got two negations. So they contradict. I can close that branch. OK, so that branch was actually pretty similar to this branch, just a little bit different with how the negations behave. OK. So there was an example which used the quantifier rules, but it didn't use identity. So let's have a look at how we would do one of these with identity. So I wanted to show you an example that uses the idea of a definite description. The blah, 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 blah. OK, the present king of France is bald or the lecturer is going on too long or whatever. OK, remember that we render that using an existential, an if and only if, an identity. This bit here, basically. So this bit says there is a unique F and this bit says, and that thing is G. So this could be saying the lecturer is going on too long. There's a unique lecturer and they're going on too long. Or it could say the present king of France is bald. OK, there is a unique present king of France and he's bald. So if you're not too clear on how this stuff with definite descriptions works, 
I've made a video on that. It's up here somewhere. Go and take a look at that. Whatever that says, let's take that to be our premise, that to be another premise, and this to be the conclusion that we're after. OK, and we're going to be interested in this identity here. OK, so if these are our premises and that's our conclusion. What are we going to do? We're going to negate our conclusion. We're going to instantiate this existential here. And that has to be with a new name. So we're going to pick a new name B. So we're going to get for all Y, F, Y, if and only if Y equals B. Because we're putting in B for X and G B. That's a conjunction, an and, so we just get the simple uh, each conjunct on its own. For all y, f, y, if and only if y equals b and g, b. I could have ticked that one and that one off earlier, so I'll do that now. OK, so I've got this universally quantified sentence here, and I want to instantiate with an old name if possible. So I've got two old names. I've got a and I've got b, and I have to choose one of them. However, if I choose b, I'm going to get a sentence that says B equals B, which isn't going to be very helpful because that's a logical truth. And if I prove a logical truth along the way, well, you know, big deal. It's not really going to help me to prove the stuff I want to prove. But if I put A in here and I get A equals B, then that is going to be helpful because I've got GB. If I also know that A and B are the same, then I could infer GA. And that's what I'm trying to get to. So let's instantiate this with A for Y. So I'm going to get F A if and only if A equals B. I don't tick this sentence off because in theory I could come back to it. But as it happens, I'm not going to need to. OK, so we're going to look at this if and only if. It's a branching rule and basically it says either they're both true or they're both false. So on the left we get both sentences as they are. And on the right, we get both sentences negated. I'm going to write the negated identity like that. OK, not A equals B. A isn't identical to B. Now, what do we get? Well, this one has got not FA and we had FA up here. So that one closes. So here I've got the information that A is the same thing as B. But here I know that A isn't G. So I can infer that B isn't G. OK, so from here and here, I can use the identity rule and infer this. So I've got G, B, but I've got its negation, not G, B. So we can close that branch. OK, so that tree closes. Both branches close. So we have proved this conclusion from these premises. OK, guys, so there we have two examples of proof trees for first order logic. I hope you found them helpful, useful. If you have, do me a favour, give this video a thumbs up. Thank you so much for watching this far. If you've got any comments, leave me one down below. It's always good to hear from you and I hope to see you back for the next one.